In this problem, we're going to find the electric potential at some point z uh, that is uh, some distance above the uh, this charge density right here. That's in the shape of a solid cylinder that has a volume charge density of rho, has a radius of r, and a length of l right here. And so we'll begin by using our uh, new tool that we have. Of course, this is using infinity as a reference point. We have to check to make sure that there's no infinity uh, portions on this uh, charge density, which it is. We're good on this side. There's no, there's no infinite charge uh, links on here. And so the next part is going to have to be to figure out each one of these pieces for the electric potential here. So luckily we were already given. Uh, there's nothing fancy we have to do for the volume charge density. Now if we move all over to the electric, the volume charge, first we have to figure out what's our strategy here. Um, so since we have a uh, um, since this is distance z above the x axis or the above the axis right here, we can just go ahead and mark this as our axis right here, straight through the center, leaving this as distance l over two and this is distance l over two. Uh, the reason why we do that and not use it down here is because then we'd have to do l, you know, z plus you know l over two or z minus l over two in order to change the variables. But all we have to do if we do if we do it so that the uh, the the axis is right here through the center. We just have to do that for uh, uh, just like z plus two, oh, l over two for the um, different uh, limits of integration, which makes things a lot easier. It's going to be needed for this problem. <laughs> so our, our strategy overall is to first um, divide it up into divide the um, the electric field or the electric contribution from all the contributions of uh, each disk right here. Let's make an arbitrary disk and then add up all the uh, electric potential contributions from that. And then we'll integrate all the disks all the way up and all the way down to the limits of the cylinder. So first, if we just concentrate on the disk, right? Some infinitely small disk that we have here. I'm just kind of uh, um, just blowing this up into its uh, um, di differentially small area element, we know that this is dr, and then we'll just take that infinitely small portion of dr, and then we'll multiply it by 2r, because we're, we're taking this, uh, this, this length and just sweeping it around to find this area, and we'll just keep doing that varying r from 0 all the way out to the max radius of, of r right here, and that will be all the electric field, or electric potential contributions from one of these disks, and then we just got to integrate those disks all the way up and all the way down to the limits here. So that is our, that is the first part of our um, volume charge density is 2 pi, whoops, 2 pi r dr. And then we're going to uh, integrate all the way up and all the way down. So that means we're going to be integrating over dz. So this is our volume charge um, uh, element right here. And next we got to think, figure out what is our, um, our separation vector right here between each contributing piece and the uh, and the point at which we're evaluating the electric field at. So if you look at the the triangle that I just drew, that could just be the, where this right here is the vector pointing from some arbitrary point on one of the disks all the way up to the point Z. We already know that this length is going to be um, uh, equal to uh, uh, DZ, right? So because this is some point Z and Z is going to be our arbitrary point right now. And we know this is some distance R, little r, right? So that this distance by Pythagorean's theorem is equal to, let me go ahead and write it out. It's going to be a little bit messy. Is equal to um, R squared plus Z squared in the most arbitrary sense. And these are the two variables that we're integrating over. So these, so this vector right here will kind of be changing based off of where that disk is. It's going to be integrating all the way over, so it captures that uh, pretty nicely here. So we'll go ahead and make our substitutions here. We have uh, double integrals that we're working with. Our row stays the same, 2 pi r dr dz. And, uh, you know, best practice, I probably shouldn't use the Z because I'm going to have Z in the limits of the integrals, but um, just know that, I mean, we could put this as a Z prime or change the Z, but I'm just going to keep Z as just a forever arbitrary Z right now. But it's, um, 
just a piece of warning before we keep moving on. C squared. Okay, so now we'll do a limits of integration. Uh, automatically, I could already tell that this R integral the, is going to be way easier uh, to, to take care of than the, the Z integral right here. So I'll just go ahead and do the limits of R first. Remember, we're going to go from 0 to R at one of this uh, arbitrary disk. And then for the limits of Z, based off of what we used for our limits of integration, we'll go all the way up from um, z uh, z is equal or yeah z is equal to z plus l over two and then z uh, z minus l over two so this was l over two z so this distance here or this distance is just a z over two here so we'll go ahead and put those uh, limits of integration in and start integrating We'll go ahead and begin by taking all these, some of the constants and moving them out. Before that, I'm gonna go ahead and do some cleaning up here. So what's left is rho over two epsilon naught. C plus L over two, C minus L over two. R zero, so again, like I said, R dr over square root of, let me make this a little neater, R dr over R squared plus Z squared, and living under square root of two, and then DZ on the outside. So this is a much easier integral to solve. So um, let me just make things a little bit faster for everybody here. Maybe not. always wonder if this is actually a uh, saving time but I think it's good to exercise whenever you can the technology you got so that integral ends up being like I said a relatively easy one just means uh, r of the square root with the limits right here much easier than the DZ one, and we'll go ahead and put in our limits of integration. So that all ends up being, so with the big R squared plus Z squared minus, um, let's see here, Z. So what it ends up being, then DZ. Okay, the dz, now this is much harder integral to solve. I'll go ahead and use uh, my favorite, which is the uh, calculator, in order to solve this one. So this one's, this whole integral ends up becoming, the indefinite side ends up becoming z times r squared plus z squared. Let's see here. Oops, sorry. That z is times all this plus r squared, the natural log of everything uh, underneath the integral. Plus c. In curly bracket, in big bracket, and now we have a limit, our limits that we have here z plus l over 2. C minus L over two. All right, that's our limit. And the next thing that we can do is go ahead and uh, kind of clean things up a bit. I'll go ahead and just distribute this Z right here. So let's go ahead and move this down, make us a little bit more room. So we distribute the Z that I'm erasing right now. So this gets rid of the, um, parentheses this becomes a z and a z squared at this point um, looking around i don't see much else that i can clean up so we'll go ahead and leave that and we'll actually you know what we'll pull this um this one over two out here it becomes a four then we can ditch these curly brackets you know make things a little bit more cleaner 
All right, let's go ahead and throw these limits of integration in. So we can start with our rho over um, pi over epsilon naught. We'll give this a curly bracket, big bracket. And then, so this is just the first limit of integration plus L over two. So everywhere that we're ha we have a Z, we're just putting Z plus L over two kind of explodes everything out a little bit, but that's, that's math. This one will be uh, longer than the previous one, or than the next one, because we can just like copy and paste this, and make things a little bit easier. plus z, which z turns into z plus l over 2. Uh, let's see here. And this, and then that's all in one bracket. Each bracket is the limits of integration. So this minus um, everything else. And then we just copy and paste this down for the uh, second limit of integration. And actually, I'll just go ahead and just distribute this, this minus sign already. So this turns to a minus, this turns into a plus here, this one turns into a minus. All right, so that um, ends up working out pretty nicely, and then I'll end the curly bracket here and ditch the square brackets up here, right? So one long uh, equation. And then to make the limits of integration correct, I'll just turn all these z plus L over 2s into z minus L over 2. All right, now what we can do is uh, the first thing that we can look at is just combining the natural logs since they both have an r squared common to them, and then this is a natural log of some argument minus a natural log of another argument. We can just um, turn that into, use the properties of natural log to kind of combine them into one. And honestly, you could probably sit here and massage this into something slightly more presentable. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend it unless, you know, your uh, instructors were very uh, keen on that. Because, I don't know, and personally, I don't believe that it provides that much more significant insight. There are some questions where... I think it's very useful for you to, to massage it into a form where uh, you can clearly see that that there's, you know, it kind of heightens the physics and, and brings it to the surface of what's going on. But this is, I don't think, one of those problems. So I would recommend just kind of leaving it into this form right here. So we just combine those two natural logs with the R squared out in front. The next thing what we're going to do is uh, combine our let's, um, uh, our loose z's here, or uh, your yeah, sorry, our, our uh, square roots that we have over here. So we'd have uh, this whole thing plus. We'll just add this one down here. Z plus l over two, r squared plus quantity of z plus L over two. So we got our two square roots, so it's the same thing. Um, minus, don't think I'll have enough room on that side, so I'll just move it down here. So this is minus the same thing. So we took care of this one, we took care of this one, so now we have these, these ones here that we'll just add. So minus quantity of Z plus L over two squared, and then plus Z minus L over two squared, uh, and curly brackets. All right, so that is this. This is where I'm gonna stop for this problem. Uh, like I said, you can spend a lot of time trying to massage all these things, but it doesn't really um, give a, a heightened amount of uh, physical interpretation of what it is, so I just recommend leaving it in that form. We still have to find out the electric field, 
um, but well, I'll save that for uh, the second part of this video. And then the big thing to notice is that you're just just taking this, uh, uh, just making sure that you're able to analyze this, make sure that this is, uh, in, in fact, a, a, an applicable form of uh, to find the electro potential for this charge density, and then just making sure that you find the correct uh, separation vector, and then finding uh, smart ways in order to find to break up this integral here.